The SS France is not to be confused with the SS Ile de France, which was an ocean liner in the early 1900s. She was a beauty, but that is another video. This ship has a very colorful, interesting history to say the least. She went through multiple owners and had her name changed three times. Her ending was the sad fate that seemingly befalls all the great ocean liners of the time. A combination of neglect and safety issues would ultimately doom this great vessel. The SS France was owned and operated by the French line, which operated in Lahar, France. A new ocean liner was ordered on July 26th of 1956. She would be named the SS France. She would be built at the Chantiers de l'Antique shipyards located in Saint Nazaire, France. This is one of the largest shipyards in the world and it had the ability to build huge ocean liners as well as military vessels. Situated near Nantes at the mouth of the Loire River, the shipyard was capable of easily getting the largest ships into the open Atlantic Ocean. The keel of the SS France would be laid down on October 7th of 1957. Her yard number would be G-19. After three years, the ship would be launched and christened on May 11th, 1960. Her maiden voyage would be on February 3rd of 1962. Her IMO number would be 5119143. She would cost approximately 80 million US dollars to complete. The SS France would be 1,030 feet 8 inches long with a beam of 110 feet 7 inches. From her keel to her mast, she would be 222 feet high. Her draft would be 34 feet 5 inches. The SS France had 12 decks and would displace 52,646 gross tons. She had 160,000 horsepower generated by geared CEM Parsons turbine engines. Her top speed would be approximately 30 knots and her capacity was up to 617 first class passengers up to 1,637 tourist class passengers and up to 1,253 crew. It's life aboard the SS France that makes the difference. It's one of the last of life's great luxuries. You know at the moment you step aboard, it's a chance to live a little, to while away the day, and then to dance all night. Time stands still while you're aboard the France. It's fine French living, spacious staterooms, perfect service. We pamper you. Not to mention the food. Quiche Lorraine, Canard de l'Orange, Souffle et Fromage. Cooked as only the finest French chefs can cook them. And the red and white table wines, complimentary with every lunch and dinner. Close your eyes, you can almost smell the vineyards. Nice and elegant, that's the word of life aboard the SS France. It brings out the Paris in you. Regular sailings to and from England and France. See a travel agent for details. Special rate from the French line, less than six cents a mile. For less than renting a car, the SS France sails you to Europe and gives you all of the following. Five American breakfasts served with charming bonjour madame, monsieur. What a way to start the day. Five French luncheons with the sound red or white table wine, compliments of your host at sea. Bouillon at mid-morning, tea each afternoon. Five French dinners, the foods of France are unexcelled. Again, wines are on the house. This service is magnifique. French line services. It deserves a special mention because, because it is the most special. A century of tradition makes it so. French atmosphere, the beauty of the French interiors, elegant public rooms, libraries, palatial theater, original works of art, deep carpeting everywhere. Spacious cabins with generous closet space, marvelous bathrooms with heated towels, individual air conditioning, private telephone. 
swimming pool, sauna baths, gymnasium, golf, clay pigeon shooting, bowling, squash, an enormous amount of deck space. With original works of art, priceless paintings, sculptures, tapestries, mosaics by Brock, Picasso, Atrillo, Daffy, Jean Picard, De Du, Hilaire, and De Du. Joy de Vivi, a warm, gay, elegant ambiance of France, dancing, music, new friends, even doing nothing at all becomes a fine art. World's longest deck space, indoors and outdoors, to relax and rejuvenate, read a good book, sip bouillon, feel absolutely like royalty. A boutique, get a Parisian hairdo, buy an elegant handbag, sweater, tie, or perfume, naturally everybody speaks your language well. See a marvelous movie in the largest, most luxurious theater afloat. It seats almost 700 people. Book with your travel agent early. Departures from New York to Southampton, a la Havre, France. DSS France's main routes would be between Southampton, La Havre, France, and New York City. She would serve as the SS France from 1962 until 1974. She would then be taken out of service officially on October 24, 1974. A day later, on October 25th, she would be decommissioned. After being out of service for a span of five years, the SS France would be sold by the French line to the Norwegian cruise line. On June 26, 1979, the Norwegian Cruise Line would acquire the super ocean liner SS France from the French line. The ship, originally built as a transatlantic ocean liner, would be transformed into a cruise ship. She would be renamed the SS Norway. The ship would be refitted for her new duties at the Lloyd Werft Brehaven Berf Dockyard, located in Bremerhaven. Originally founded in 1863, the shipyard has become a member of the Vulcan Group. The refit of the SS Norway would be completed on May 3, 1980. She would be christened the same day by King Olaf IV. She would go from having 12 decks to 13. Her new maiden voyage would be on May 6, 1980. Her ports of registry would be Oslo, Norway from 1980 through 1987, then Nassau, Bahamas from 1987 until 2003. The SS Norway's call sign would be LITA, or LITA. By late 1984, her gross tonnage would increase to 70,202 tons. Her total horsepower would be cut to 80,000 total horsepower. She would also be modified to having a twin propeller propulsion system. After her overhaul, the ship was able to accommodate up to 1,944 passengers and 875 members of her crew. After an upgrade in 1994, the capacity of the passengers would increase to 2,465. The ship would also go from having 13 decks to having 15 decks. The SS Norway's tonnage would also increase to 76,049 gross tons. The SS Norway's new routes would be between Miami, Key West, Cosmo, Rotan, and Great Stirrup Cay. She would also occasionally do European cruises as well. The SS Norway would be in service from 1980 through 2003. Bigger and better, new and improved, and once again the world's largest cruise ship, Norwegian Cruise Line's SS Norway, now offers additional attractions to her passengers, including two new glass enclosed decks housing 135 deluxe cabins with four of the largest suites in the cruise industry a 6,000 square foot Roman style spa with the most complete facilities and treatments afloat, an intimate a la carte supper club, a new Broadway style production show, 
More than $40 million was spent on the additions as the great ship resumed her seven-day Caribbean cruises from Miami. As the world's largest cruise ship at 74,200 gross registered tons, she remains the world's longest at 1,035 feet long. The beam, a few inches too wide to fit through the Panama Canal, is 110 feet. Purists who decry the Norway's alteration from the ever graceful lines of the former transatlantic liner France can rest easily. The addition of the two new decks is really quite acceptable. A tribute to the creativity of architect Tage Lundborg. Although the lower of the two decks extends the length of the ship, the top deck is located only around the first of the ship's two distinctive stacks. Among the 135 new deluxe cabins are four apartment-sized suites. Owners in Grand Deluxe with 760 and 600 square feet respectively. For comparison, the average size of cruise ship cabin is approximately 150 square feet. These plush suites face forward to the new sun and sky decks and feature floor-to-ceiling windows, drawing rooms, bedrooms, dressing rooms, jacuzzis and full baths, double vanities and half baths with shower. A wraparound balcony with breakfast area is an additional highlight of the two owner's suites. Two-fifths of the new cabins and suites have balconies and one-fifth of the ship's total cabins are now deluxe facilities. Two new elevators have been added to facilitate movement of passengers occupying the new staterooms. Lack of proper maintenance to the ship due to lack of funding would ultimately take its toll on the SS Norway. At one point she would even be detained for safety violations. The SS Norway would be taken out of service on May 25, 2003. While the ship was docked in Miami, a boiler explosion would cause casualties and severe damage to the ship. The SS Norway would be towed back to Germany for repairs, but would ultimately sit for two years due to complications with asbestos. The ship would be decommissioned on May 23rd of 2005, and in 2006, the SS Norway would be sent to Malaysia and sold for scrap. While anchored off the coast of Malaysia awaiting scrapping, the SS Norway would be renamed the Blue Lady. In a last-ditch effort to save the historic and prestigious ocean liner slash cruise ship, complications with contamination from the ship, including asbestos, made it impossible to reuse the ship without decontamination. The huge ship would be anchored in the spot as the Blue Lady from 2006 to 2008. By July 12th of 2008, the bow and the stern of the ship would be gone with the rest of the ship ultimately being demolished by late 2008. The ship's bow would be recovered and put on display at the Paris Yacht Marina, Port de Green, Paris, where it remains to this day.